Let me show you the New Testament basis to find Jesus in the Hebrew Bible. If you believe in the New Testament, then you should find Jesus appearing in the Hebrew Bible during the Old Testament era. Now, let's go to Hebrews 11, 24 to 26. By faith, Moses, when he, when he was come to years, refused to, call, to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Why did he refuse to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. See, I don't think you caught it. Verse 26. Why did Moses give up his status as Pharaoh's grandson, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, and give up the riches of Egypt and the fame of Egypt? Why? Why did he do that? He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Did you catch it? So why did he give up the riches of Egypt and his status as the son of Pharaoh's daughter? Because he deemed it of greater value and greater honor and riches to suffer shame for the sake of Christ. He did it for Christ's sake. He gave it all up for the sake of Jesus. Do you understand now? Moses saw Jesus the Son. And Jesus allowed Moses to see the one who's invisible. So you see why you should expect to find Jesus all over the Old Testament? Because the New Testament is inspired, consistent with the Old Testament. Okay? Now I'm going to blow your minds away a little more. Pay attention now. I want to blow your minds a little more. Are you ready to be blown away a little more? Let's go to Exodus 13, 21 to 22. And the Lord Jehovah went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. So who's in the pillar of cloud? Jehovah, right? Who's in the pillar of cloud? Jehovah. To lead the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. So you caught it? Jehovah was in the pillar of cloud by day, which appeared as the pillar of fire by night. That was Jehovah in the cloud, right? As he led them with Moses as their head, right? I want to sure you got it. Now, do me a favor, first last. Post Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, verse 15, and verse 18. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, verse 15, verse 18. Okay, read with me. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are justice, a God of truth, and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. But Jeshurun, that's the name of Israel, by the way. If you didn't know it, one of the names of Israel is Jeshurun. Jeshurun grew fat and kicked, rebelled, stuffed its fast, fat face, became spoiled, spoiled brat. You grew fat, you grew thick, you are a beast. Then he forsook God who made him. And scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. Then verse 18. Of the rock who begot you, spiritually gave birth to you, you are unmindful. And have forgotten the God who fathered you. Okay, guys, do you see that the rock that fed them and fattened them. The rock that led them and followed them. The rock that gave birth to them spiritually. The rock who disciplined them because they were <clears throat> rebellious sons and daughters, spoiled brats. Is Jehovah God, right? He is the rock, right? That's what you read here. He is the rock, Jehovah, right? And then in Exodus 13, 21, 22, you saw Jehovah was in the cloud leading Moses and Israel. Don't forget that. He was in the pillar of cloud, which became a pillar of fire by night, leading Moses and Israel. And he's the one who split the Red Sea because Exodus 13, 14 is all about the Red Sea splitting. And he is that rock that followed them that led them, that fed them, that gave birth to them spiritually, that rebuked them. Okay, now get ready to be blown away. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 of 4. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 of 4. Get ready to be blown away. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, the Red Sea, all were baptized into Moses. Oh, there goes the Exodus. In the cloud, that cloud again that followed them. And in the sea, all ate the same spiritual food. 
So they're being sustained not just physically, but spiritually as well. And all drank the same spiritual dream, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Bam. There you go. That rock was Christ. So who was in the pillar of cloud? Who was following them and leading them? Who was feeding them spiritually and nourishing them? Who did they rebel against? Jesus Christ, their spiritual rock. Okay, now, final example that you should expect Jesus in the Old Testament. You ready? For now, when I say final, meaning for now. Jude chapter 1, verses 4 to 5. You thought you were blown away. Watch what's going to happen to you now. Watch here. Jude 1, verse 4. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turned the grace of our God into lewdness, using Jesus' grace as an excuse to be immoral pigs, which is blasphemy, and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, guys, I want you to pay attention. In the Greek, there are two words for Lord. There's despotes, despotes, and or kurios. Now, you see where it says our, our only, only Lord God? The word Lord God, there the word for Lord is despotes. You see where it says Lord Jesus? There it's kurios or kirius. Jesus is the one called kurios, kirius, all right? You catch it? Lord Jesus, in Greek, the word Lord is kurios. Kirius, right? Okay? You guys got that, right? He's the one called Kurios, not God. God is called Despotes. Because here, if you see it, because in Jude 1 5, you're going to see who the Lord is. Jude 1 5. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroyed those who did not believe. Folks, in context, who's the Lord that saved people out of Egypt and destroyed them in the wilderness for their rebellion? Let's put Jude 1, 4 and 5 back to back because you're going to get mind blown now. Watch here. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only despotes God, Lord God, and our kurios, kurios, Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the kurios, kurios, Lord, go back to find the identity of the Lord. It's Jesus Christ, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So Jesus is the Lord, kurios, that saved them out of Egypt, but then destroyed them in the desert for their unbelief. Okay. Let me now blow you guys away here. Okay? Let me blow you away. You ready? Our earliest Greek witnesses, with the exception of one Greek copy, which is the oldest copy of Jude. You know what they have in Jude 1.5? Quote the SV, Jude 1.5, ESV. Here's the SV. You know what it has in the earliest witnesses? It actually reads Jesus, Jude 1, 5, ESV. Now, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Wow. The earliest Greek copies of Jude 1, 5, with the exception of the oldest one, they read Jesus in Jude 1, 5. Now, here's the note of the NET. This is all in my article. The NET Bible has textual notes. And I quote it in my article, and I give you the link. Now, watch here. The reading, Isus, is deemed too hard by several scholars. There was a committee that when they looked at the variants, they go, man, this word Jesus can't be original. It's too difficult. No way. Since it involves the notion of Jesus acting in the early history of the nation of Israel. Now, watch this part, folks. However... Not only does this reading enjoy the strongest support from a variety of early witnesses, but the plethora of variants demonstrate that scribes were uncomfortable with it.
I'll explain why the, the difference in the reading. But are you guys catching it? The widespread early witnesses of Jude 1.5 had the word Jesus there. Okay? But guys, you want to get blown away? The oldest existing copy of Jude is P72, Papyrus 72, dated in the 3rd and 4th centuries, meaning 200s, early 300s. Here's the link. The oldest copy of Jude that had Jude 1.5 is P72, Papyrus 72. I gave you the link, guys. Gave you the link. This copy is dated 3rd century 200s, maybe 4th century 300s. Many scholars believe 200s. Do you know what that reads? The oldest copy of Jude 1.5. You know what it reads? I'll show you. But I want to remind you about what you have always known, namely that the God Christ, or God who is Christ, the Greek is Theos Christos, the God Christ saved people out of Egypt, but then he destroyed those who do not believe. The oldest existing copy of Jude 1 verse 5, P72, reads the God Christ, Theos Christos, Theos, Theos Christos. All three variants mean the same thing, by the way. Lord in context is Jesus. Jesus, if it's the original, that is the earlier reading. Or if you go with P72, the oldest copy of Jude, God Christ, all the readings are saying the same thing. And what are they saying? Jesus is that God. He is that angel of Jehovah, sent by Jehovah, who is Jehovah God, that was there with Moses and Israel that brought them out of Egypt, punished them in the desert for their rebellion. They're all affirming the pre-human existence and activity of Jesus as Jehovah God, the angel of Jehovah in the Old Testament. 